Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to session Fartook-2. This is Phoenix, exclaimed Webley O'Toole. Well, this place stinks. I thought it was supposed to be a magnificent city. The group looked around as they reached the far end of the fishing docks and found bustling activity in every direction. The people aboard the ferry were slowly gathering their belongings and were slowing the process of debarkation. This gave the would-be adventurers an opportunity to look around and take in the new environment. Lady Irena held a piece of cloth up to her nose and was obviously distressed by the aroma wafting off the water. You look peaked, milady, noticed Cabe's silver tongue. She waved him off, gasping out that she would be fine. Fargus Stoutheart looked quite annoyed at the slow progress in getting off the boat and began to complain loudly. Ahead of him, the pious sister Elena elbowed him in the ribs to quiet him. Muttering under her breath, she advised that they hadn't drowned and they were steps away from being on solid ground. She finished by reminding him that patience was a virtue before exclaiming out, Don't touch that! The halfling rogue was poking through what appeared to be a human arm that was floating in the flotsam. The others looked horrified and the bard asked where he got it. Welby pointed out, I didn't get it from anywhere. I saw it come out of the water from the cliff and it floated over here. The group looked up and noticed several streams of water exiting the rock face below the fortified wall atop the cliff. Sewer exit, ex explained Sister Elaine. It keeps the city clean, but it befouls the bay. The others nodded in acknowledgement and took in the sights of the harbor. Welby pushed aside the arm and studied their location. Boy, two weeks ago I was in Arbiton, and there was only a hundred people in the whole village. Today I'm in Phoenix, and there must be a hundred people working on the docks alone. Maybe even on that ship over there. Fargus nodded and commented that he had never seen this many people together in his travels through the woods. Lady Irena slipped past the others as the rest of the ferry had finally moved out of the way. We can go now. The ferryman is right. You do look like a bunch of rubes. As the group zigzagged through the rough, rough wooden planks, they passed several fishing vessels, bringing their catch into market, increasing the aroma exponentially. Busy workers moved quickly past the newcomers with the occasional jostling. Shouting above the din, Lady Irena yelled back towards the rest of the group. Is it always this loud? The others looked shocked at, at the volume and did their best to navigate their way along the wet dock, dodging several workers. Looking ahead, they noticed the rest of the ferry riders had already made it onto solid ground when a large commotion was heard and a group was caught yelling, Watch out! Loose animal! A large ram dragging rope behind it was fleeing from its handlers. As the group watched in wonder, they quickly noticed that the beast had changed directions and was now thundering towards them. Fargus the ranger stepped in front of the elven mage loudly, announcing her to stand back, I will protect you, and took a defensive posture, squaring off with the fast-moving ram. A look of grim determination washed over Fargus as he prepared to stand against the animal, but it all changed in a moment of time. Irina leaned in and whispered, Thanks, hero, I got this. A black goop shot out of her fingers as she pointed towards the ram, and the fluid landed on the wood in front of the charging beast. A grin crossed her face, and Fargus looked as the animal struck the fluid and skidded off the dock as it hit the patch of grease and plunged into the shallow waters of the bay. As the handlers dove in to corral the animal, the elf gingerly stepped over the patch of grease. Turning around smiling, Irina told the others to watch their step. One by one, each of the future heroes carefully made it over the patch, but a dock worker carrying fish was not so lucky. As the fisherman fell and plunged into the fetid water, Welby laughed until he doubled over. 
Cabe observed the incident and looked back to the mage. Just gonna leave it there? He posed. Blushing with embarrassment, Irena wiggled her fingers and the grease spot dissipated as quickly as it had appeared. Sister Elaine looked down to the halfling and inquired, How are you going to find Gregor? To which he responded, Gregor who? As the cleric rolled her eyes, she chastised him. You know, Gregor Finewire, the guy you're supposed to deliver the box to. Would you pay attention? A broad smile began to cross the halfling's face, and the religious woman realized she was having her leg pulled. I'm sure Mr. Finewire will present himself as time goes by. Are you going to help? She politely declined, stating that she needed to check into the temple and search for pilgrim opportunities. He nodded and wished her the best of luck. At this point, both Cabe and Fargus had moved on to search for a tavern to quench their thirst, and the elven mage was headed for the main road up to Phoenix. As the halfling and the human parted, someone began to yell out for Gregor, catching their attention. Elaine shrugged her shoulders as well as Welby rubbed his hands together, smiling, and said, Pity! The young cleric caught up to the mage and asking if she could join her in Phoenix. The two began to chat about their futures and made their way up the muddy trail towards the city. Back on the shorefront, Welby O'Toole approached the plain-looking man and inquired if he was Gregor. He confirmed, and he was presented with a box. The man took it skeptically and began to examine it. The halfling presented an outstretched arm and cleared his throat loudly. Gregor looked at the scene, then fumbled through his pockets, presenting a small leather bag that made clinking noises. Um, uh, here, stammered the man, giving over the pouch. Welby bowed deeply and began to skip down the main road where the multiple buildings stood facing each other. Catching a glimpse of the bard and ranger, the halfling quickened his pace, dodging through the crowd until he finally caught up with the pair. Where are you headed? he inquired. The men explained that they were going to find a mug of ale before seeking out job opportunities. Welby shook the leather pouch and announced that the first round was on him, which brought smiles to the man and the half-elf. Scanning the various businesses, they spotted one establishment with a sign reading, Repository of Ruination. Judging from the smell, noted Fargus, I'd say we have found us a tavern. As the trio started to walk inside, the door was flung open and a drunken sop landed face down in the muck outside. As the pair of ladies climbed the steep incline to the city walls, they discussed their intentions and hopes for prosperous careers. Sister Elaine stopped talking, moving in the middle of her thoughts, and Lady Irena asked if she was okay, but was cut short with a raised hand. Excuse me, gentlemen, she began as the group of rough-looking individuals were passing. Did you say Gregor Finewire? The men looked at each other, and the largest spoke, confirming that he was Gregor Finewire, but he didn't have time for a lady companionship at this time. The men headed down towards the mucky incline towards the dock as the cleric paled. What's wrong, Elaine? inquired the elven maiden. Eyes darting back and forth down the trail, the cleric spoke to her friend. That man was Gregor Finewire. Welby gave the package to the wrong person. The ladies looked at each other, then began to head back down, but were blocked by several wagons in a line moving down the docks with a large group of guards forcing people back and out of the way. We have to hurry and warn the halfling before it is too late, commented the cleric. That man did not look like he was a forgiving person. Lady Irena reluctantly followed close behind, but both had lost sight of the large man and his group of thugs in the crowd that gathered near the docks. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.